On today's episode, will the neon shortage cripple computer chip production? Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. When most people think about neon, they think of the glowing discharge tubes that made the signage of 1950s and 1960s America. It was the original application of the controlled ionization of gas in a glass tube, but another much more significant development of the 1950s, the laser, is the reason why neon gas is a critical commodity today. Why? Well, the short answer is photolithography. Photolithography is the core technology of integrated circuit manufacturing, the process by which extraordinarily small surface details etched into silicon substrates. Now, four decades ago, the light source for this process could be a simple mercury vapor arc lamp emitting at a wavelength of 365 nanometers. While focal length and beam control were once the primary determinants of resolution in the process, the drive for ever higher transistor density has reduced the size of substrate features to incredibly small dimensions. 14 nanometers is now common, and the drive is on to widely adopt single-digit resolution. 9 nanometers is almost inconceivably small. How small? Well, it's approximately 10,000 times smaller than the diameter of a human hair. Now, at these scales, the wavelength of light used in the process is important, and it's proportional to resolution. Shorter wavelength means higher density. Now, the current state-of-the-art uses excimer laser technology in the deep ultraviolet, with a wavelength of just under 200 nanometers. The excimer lasers used in semiconductor manufacturing use well-known laser gases such as argon and fluorine, with neon as a buffer gas. Now in operation, the active and buffer gases degrade and they're periodically discarded. And where does the manufacturing world buy neon? Well, until recently, Ukraine produced 25% of the world's neon as a byproduct of the nation's large steel production base pre-war. And according to Reuters, two Ukrainian companies, InGas and Cryoin, produce 45 to 54% of the neon used in chip manufacturing around the world. Overall, chip making represents 75% of the global demand for neon, with the rest used mainly for industrial lasers and those used for eye surgery. With a global shortage of integrated circuits already impacting multiple industries, the stakes are high. The Beijing-based Global Times has reported that neon prices have risen 65% since the beginning of the year, and that Chinese production will be slow to ramp up to infill the global supply chain. Now, neon can be made anywhere by distillation of liquid air, but with neon having a mass fraction of one part in 79,000 in the atmosphere, the gas will be expensive. There are solutions, however, in the short term. The Taiwanese major TSMC has announced a program to recycle and purify spent neon, and the laser makers themselves are optimizing operating procedures to reduce neon consumption. But the real solution may come from the relentless drive for higher density. IBM has announced two nanometer technology with junctions smaller than a single strand of DNA. Now, photolithography on this scale uses extreme ultraviolet technology centered on lasers focused on droplets of molten tin to produce a plasma in a vacuum. It's expensive and complex, but it can create light with wavelengths under 14 nanometers. Veldhoven Netherlands-based ASML has shipped equipment for advanced chips to customers including TSMC, and as 5 and 2 nanometer technology becomes commonplace, the need for neon as a laser gas may decrease significantly. But with a near monopoly on extreme ultraviolet technology and a full order book, it's unlikely that the transition can happen faster than it's already happening. In the short term, the semiconductor shortages look set to continue. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.